What's going on everyone? So it's the weekend. And one thing that's on my mind a lot is how far are these quantum computers away? Really, truly, how far are they away? And I've seen some articles this week that I wanna jump into that have some recent breakthroughs that would indicate that they're not as far away as some people might think. So we're gonna look at the IBM Quantum CTO. We're gonna look at that article. We're gonna look at what Google and Microsoft and IBM are saying as well in a separate article from CNBC. We're gonna look through a University of Cambridge ultra secure communication with quantum. And we're also going to look at a science tech daily article about a 25 year barrier in chip fabrication that has just been broken. So we got a lot to cover. We're gonna cover four articles. I've already gone in and highlighted everything. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, so this is gross. It's literally gross, you'll see what I'm talking about. So the IBM Quantum CTO says codes and commitments are critical for hitting quantum roadmap goals. IBM reports a novel method for reducing quantum computing error burden could push useful quantum machines into action within two years. The gross code brought us two really big things. One is a tenfold reduction in the number of physical qubits needed per logical qubit compared to typical surface code estimates. Uh, this stuff's good. This stuff is good. Dr. Pepper, zero sugar. You know, I think the zero sugars, I don't know if they're good for you or not, but they taste a lot better than the diet ones. I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, Dr. Pepper isn't paying me to say that. <laughs> The gross code bought, brought us, bought us two really big things. Oliver Dial, IBM's quantum chief technology officer said in an interview with R&D World, one is a tenfold reduction in the number of physical qubits needed per logical qubit compared to typical surface code estimates. The second benefit is a streamlined design that's far easier to manufacture and scale according to Dial. IBM's approach packages 12 logical qubits within a roughly 300 physical qubit module, what Dial calls a repeating unit cell. Gross, as in, as in a dozen dozen. Have you heard this before? Because I have not heard this before. Uh, the name gross code comes from the number 144, a dozen dozen reflected in the structure of the system. And if we measure this by the cost of a dozen eggs, times a dozen, we'd be looking at a lot of money in our current uh, economic environment. Error correction and error mitigation. These techniques offer a way to recover accurate answers from computers that commit errors, dial told R&D world. And roadmap, not a death pact. Good to know. This is a roadmap, not a death pact. If circumstances change, we'll still accomplish these goals. Now that we put it on the roadmap, that's when the real work begins. Okay, you guys, so that sounds quite promising. Um, and we know that IBM has their quantum roadmap. In fact, we covered it in yesterday's video, the Quantum 8. Um, so I'm assuming they're adding this to their roadmap. All right, next article. And I almost forgot, but we're gonna talk about this as well. Uh, Trump has remove tariffs on computers, phones, and what is it? Chips. So NVIDIA, Apple, uh, all the concerns, all the sell-off, all the fear that's been happening in the market. What do we think is going to happen on Monday now because Trump has exempted uh, these that is a pretty crazy turn of events. I think that's gonna bode very well for tech and the market come Monday, unless there's some other piece of terrible news that comes through this weekend. This alone is gonna send Apple and Nvidia stock much higher, in my opinion. 
So Google, Microsoft, and IBM are all working on their own quantum solutions. They're bullish, why? Let's jump in and see why. While there's still differing perspectives on how long it will be until certain types of quantum computing hit commercial viability, experts from companies like Google and IBM, as well as smaller organizations like D-Wave, generally agree that quantum's most mature promising industry applications which range from medical insights to last mile delivery optimization. That's a long sentence. Unlike classical computing, which processes information through bits that can exist in zeros or ones, quantum computing is an evolving field where quantum bits or qubits can occupy both zero and one in a single unit. Companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and IBM are aggressively pursuing gate model quantum computing. And then, of course, yesterday we talked about D-Wave and their annealing technology. And annealing models have a way to go, but unlike gate models, the researchers are still developing. Annealing is able to deliver commercial value today. So you love to hear CNBC saying this and not coming directly from D-Wave. Um, it's more of a heuristic than an absolute solution. Quantum computers are capable of solving problems that are impossible for AI or supercomputers, even in the best case, says our Google rep. And then Charina Chu from Google is saying that there's a concept called quantum supremacy where quantum technology completes complex calculations no classical computer could realistically complete. Scientists at D-Wave, as well as institutions like Vancouver's Quantum Matter, published a breakthrough report in March announcing that its annealing quantum technology achieved the world's first and only demonstration of quantum computational supremacy on a useful real-world problem. So the premise of this video is when are quantum computers going to be useful? When are they going to be here? Well, the answer is right now. They're already here. Uh, gate model is catching up, of course, but annealing quantum computer is here now and providing co commercial value today. Um, let's see. Barat's also told CNBC back in January that, that D-Wave is commercial today and companies including MasterCard and Jap Jap uh, Japan's entity Docomo are using its quantum computers in production to benefit their business operation. Um, and at the time when Barats was saying this, I think there was uh, some doubt or lack of belief or whatever you want to call it. Um, we know D-Wave revenue is still currently low, but they are forecasting guiding for higher revenue. Um, as they make more sales. Drug discovery, a good quantum bet for the future. So Chu foresees the financial industry making use of quantum optimization, but she's particularly excited about the impact on the pharmaceutical industry, which is inherently quantum mechanical because of its organic compounds. So Japan Tobacco and D-Wave recently released a news article about their pharmaceutical research and how Japan Tobacco's pharmaceutical division has used a quantum annealing computer to do pharmaceutical research that exceeded the abilities of their access to classical supercomputers. So pretty cool. Right now, the molecular, molecular dynamics are so complex that math quickly gets out of hand. Instead of having to do all the wet chemistry one experience at the time, we can do it through millions of simulations on a quantum computer before you even get to the wet chemistry and the trial. All right. So that's article two of four. And I think this theme we're exploring is when are quantum computers going to be here? Is it a decade? Is it two decades? Is it two years? Is it four years? The, the answer is that we're gonna see steady progress. All these um, all these innovations and inventions and the kind of the exponential curve we're getting into, um, it's hard to, without a crystal ball, to say exactly when we're gonna have super powerful gate-based quantum computers, but we can see already that there are daily, weekly, monthly breakthroughs and new information that's coming that's changing the game um, every day. Oh, man, straight to the veins.
uh, has no business tasting that good. All right, so this one's a cool one because we know the UK has been doing some great work um, on quantum. So researchers have demonstrated that a first long distance ultra secure communication over a quantum network. Researchers have successfully demonstrated the U UK's first long distance ultra secure transfer of data over a quantum communications network, including the UK's first long distance quantum secured video call. If you're not calling me on a quantum secured line, don't even bother calling me. <sighs> but it relies on a variety of quantum phenomena to enable ultra secured data transfer. The network uses two types of quantum key distribution schemes, QKD, unhackable encryption keys that are hidden inside particles of light and distributed entanglement, a phenomenon that causes a quantum particle to be intrinsically linked. And then they're sending this over a fiber optic cable. The data was successfully transmitted between Bristol and Cambridge, a fiber distance of over 410 kilometers. I wonder how many pubs were between Bristol and Cambridge. That is pretty crazy. Quantum communications offer unparalleled security advantage compared to classical telecommunications solutions. These technologies are immune against future cyber attacks, even with quantum computers, which once fully developed will have a potential to break through even the strongest cryptographic methods currently in use. Despite the progress, no one has built a large long distance network that can handle both types of QKD, entanglement distribution, and regular data transmission all at once until now. This is a crucial step towards building a quantum secured future for our communities and society. This is an extraordinary achievement which highlights the UK's world-class strengths in quantum networking technology. So pretty cool article. So we're on article three of four. And just so you all know, this was, let's see if, so this was published the 8th of April, so four days ago. The Google article was posted the 6th of April, so just under a week ago. Uh, the IBM CTO article was published two days ago on Quantum Insider. And now we're finally looking at this SciTech Sci Daily article, which was posted, okay, every every website has a different place to put their date. So April 9th. So we're talking about recent, recent news. Um, so there's a major quantum computing advance. Scientists break 25 year barrier in chip fabrication. So engineers and physics, physicists at UCL have developed a new fabrication process for building quantum computers that achieves an almost zero failure rate and shows strong potential for scalability. According to new research, a study published in advanced materials reports the first reliable method for pre precisely arranging individual atoms in a grid, an achievement 25 years in the making. These features mean complex problems can be represented in new ways for a problem with an exceptionally large number of possible outcomes, a quantum computer is able to consider the possibilities simultaneously rather than one at a time, like a normal computer, which would take today's best supercomputers millions of years. That's one of my favorite ways to explain the quantum computer to uh, someone who is new to the subject or new to the topic. So if we had like a piece of paper, Okay, we have we have this piece of paper here and we read from top to bottom left to right and we go down and and at at its essence the uh computer is also reading left to right top to bottom left to right top to bottom now with a quantum computer we can now multiply this by one million and consider all possibilities at the same time. So that's why uh, the technology is so fascinating and it's fundamentally different because we can do what would take the best supercomputer millions of years with our traditional process and we can do it in a short period of time. 
They use a microscope capable of identifying and manipulating single atoms, similar to the needle on a vinyl record player, to precisely insert arsenic atoms into a silicon crystal. You know, you can get 25 to life to inserting arsenic into someone's crystal, so don't do it. These, these are experts. Don't try this at home. They then repeated this process to build a two by two array of single arsenic atoms ready to become qubits. We've cons we've been conservative in estimating that we can place atoms with 97% accuracy, but we are confident that this can be increased to 100% in the near future. The ability to place atoms in silicon with near perfect precision and in a way that we can scale up is a huge milestone for the field of quantum. The first time that we've demonstrated a way of achieving the accuracy and scale required. This is my favorite quote of the article, you guys. This is the this is the one. This is the this is how we're going to close this video because this is the one. We now have a huge engineering challenge ahead to be able to do this more quickly and easily. But this is the first time that I've felt certain that a universal quantum computer can be built. So, what do we take from all this? Scientists are making progress on these computers every single day. There are new breakthroughs every single day. There's breakthrough in quantum communication. There's breakthroughs in quantum networking, the computing hardware, the, the software. All of these are moving forward and the pace is accelerating. And we can use, and scientists are using, advanced AI advanced supercomputers to expedite this process. So the true answer, or my best guess, because I can't say with, with any uh, definitive, um, my best guess is two to four years is, is what we're looking at for uh, these to become prevalent and mainstream. But we're already, and that's with the caveat that we already have annealing quantum computers that are providing commercial value today. And many companies with complex problems would benefit today from something like a D-Wave quantum computer to work to help solve and optimize their hardest problems. So the answer is it's complicated, but it's closer than people think. And with these new types of advances that are happening at such a rapid clip. It's very promising and uh, I'm super excited for the future. All right, you guys, that's everything I've got for you. I hope you took, uh, I hope you found value out of these, this video on these four articles. If you did, please consider leaving a like only if I've earned it. We'll talk to you in the next one.